Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bob Burge with the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. Thanks for joining us today for a very special virtual job fair. We got some exciting jobs we're going to be hearing about in just a moment. And uh, I'm actually going to stall for just a minute or two. We have literally um, 100 plus people that have registered. So a lot of interest in today's program. So I'm going to go over a couple housekeeping items. As I can see, several of you are still logging on. Um, let me go over this real quickly. So uh, first of all, today's program is being recorded. So uh, both for the people that are able to make it live and those that uh, were not, you'll all get a recording, a link to the recording tomorrow at about this time. So you're gonna be hearing lots of information, lots of details. Uh, don't worry, you'll be able to go back and play that over and over again. You'll actually be able to share it with others as well. So look forward to that recording tomorrow at this time. Uh, questions, those are important. Um, you know, you'll see on the upper right hand side, the uh, ability to send us questions. So we'll uh, address as many of those as we can with today's time. And those that we don't get to, the folks from Baxter uh, will um, we'll get back to you. So they'll have your contact information. So do send us your questions. Those are a real important part uh, of the program today. So uh, I'm going to first, I know you guys want to learn all about these exciting jobs with an exciting company, but I'm going to go to Rob King. Rob is our Region 8 uh, Executive Director, uh, Work One South Central. Rob uh, is largely responsible for putting this together. I know we've done several of these, and I can say we do these all around the state, but there's no region that does more of these uh, than your region, Rob, in Region 8. So, hey, thanks so much for that. Rob, tell us, uh, tell our folks a little bit about Work One uh, South Central. Uh, well, thank you, Bob. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Region 8 Virtual Job Fair for Baxter International here in South Central Indiana. As uh, Bob mentioned, I'm Rob King, and I represent the South Central Region 8 Workforce Board and currently serve as board director. I would like to start things off by thanking our local business partner, Baxter International, along with our state partners at the Indiana Department of Workforce Development and our regional business services team for co-hosting this event here in Region 8. Before we get started, I would like to share a little background information about the region, uh, the Regional Workforce Board and its role in the community. The South Central Region 8 Workforce Board is a nonprofit board comprised of representatives from critical sectors, including private business, labor, education, economic development, and community-based organizations. The Workforce Board serves as a catalyst to promote collaborative relationships between business, education, labor, and regional service providers to support workforce development efforts and regional economic growth. The board is largely responsible for employment and training oversight to the Work One system in Indiana's Economic Growth Region 8 and includes the county of, um, excuse me, the county of Brown, Davies, Green, Lawrence, uh, Martin, Orange, and Owen, and of course, Monroe County. We provide employment and training programs and services in these eight counties throughout South Central Indiana using a variety of state and federal grant resources. These programs and services are delivered through our Work One job centers with a Work One office conveniently located in each of the counties we serve. We offer a, a wide array of job search, employment and training activities and services to, keep in, uh, to get and keep Hoosiers working in South Central Indiana. Uh, additionally, we work with many employers throughout our region, including small, mid-sized and larger companies such as Baxter International, um, who is, who is uh, providing this job fair today. So once again, welcome to our virtual job fair and thank you for taking the time to consider applying for employment with a company such as Baxter International. Thank you, Bob. Thanks so much, Rob, and thanks for all you do down there. And I think that's really a good reminder, get to know your Work One office and, and a lot of really good things going on there. They, they are open for business now and I know you can schedule appointments, safety first, all that. So thanks so much for that, Rob. Uh, no just before we get, I am going to launch a couple uh, quick polling questions. So you'll see those up on your screen. Um, so the first question simply wants to know, uh, are you currently employed? Yes or no? Very simple, uh, down and dirty, no good or wrong answer. This just helps the, uh, uh, this just helps the recruiters that we're going to have today. So uh, let me let that out for a little bit longer and I'll, uh, I'll close that out, and so, and then I'll share those results. Let me put that up. It's a very good mix. So just about half, 45 or 55 percent are not employed, and 45 percent are. So uh, that's good. And uh, again, no wrong or right answer there. And uh, next one is just kind of a little bit of industry uh, insight. Uh, in what industry is your current 
for most recent employment, healthcare, logistics, transportation, warehousing is an option, manufacturing, retail, restaurant, hospitality, and others. So we'll uh, get a real quick uh, input there from you all. I appreciate your time doing this. Again, no right or wrong answer, just helps the recruiters a little bit on their conversations and, and follow up. So I'm gonna close that out and share those results. You can see the, uh, the leader was manufacturing and uh, with really experience all across the board. So that's a, a very good thing. Thanks for that time. So uh, let's get things going. Let's talk about jobs. And first I wanna bring up, uh, get on a senior recruiter with Baxter, Lori Hubbard. Lori, you wanna take things and get started? Sure, thank you so much. Um, first of all, we would like to thank the team from Workforce Development um, specifically Bob, Rob, and Dave for hosting this and, and allowing us this platform to come to all of you um, and present Baxter as an, an employer. Um, we thank all of the participants here as well. Um, we know that you have many options in the job market and we are so excited that you're considering Baxter. Talk a little bit about Baxter's mission. As many of you may or may not know, uh, we do have a uh, multi facility site in uh, Bloomington, um, about seven square mile radius on that. Um, we are headquartered overall, Baxter is headquartered in um, Deerfield, Illinois, and we are, have a global presence. We're represented in over 100 countries. Um, and there in our Baxter uh, facility in Bloomington, there's about 715 employees. The Baxter employee community is unified in our shared purpose and mission. Whether you're an individual contributor or a leader of teams, each of us have a shared purpose in furthering our mission to save and sustain lives. Next, please. You know, we're in an unprecedented time and we are battling an, a pandemic as a country and, and globally. Baxter engaged early in 2019 and quickly built a safety strategy in response to ensure employee safety. We have procedures in place and enhanced infection control at every Baxter facility. In addition to taking measures to protect our employees, we have committed increased production of high demand products, increased financial contributions for humanitarian relief, and we've enhanced technical services support for health, health system providers. Next, please. While we're in a virtual world these days, uh, we thought we'd also provide you with a video that gives you a little bit of peek into what we do and the actual facility and our ongoing operations um, at our Biopharma Solutions site in, in Bloomington. An industry leader, a global presence, a singular focus. Biopharma Solutions, a business unit of Baxter is a premier CMO with a focus on injectable pharmaceuticals. Backed by over 80 years of Baxter experience in peripheral, Biopharma Solutions can support your pharmaceutical needs with a broad portfolio of sterile fill finish production capabilities. Our reputation is built on the high quality products we manufacture for our clients in a sick GMP environment. From formulation and development through commercial launch, our extensive customized support services can help guide you through marketplace complexity so you can achieve the full potential for your drug molecule. Parenteral therapeutics pose a variety of scientific and technical challenges, including reformulation, stability, chemical degradation, compatibility, leachables and extractables, and precipitation. We can help you address these challenges to achieve commercialization and market differentiation. Baxter Biopharma Solutions state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities are located in Hollow West Holland, Germany, Round Lake, Illinois, USA, and Bloomington, Indiana, USA. Baxter Biopharma Solutions award-winning Bloomington facility is a leader in sterile contract manufacturing. Our 600,000 square foot campus offers flexibility, manufacturing injectable pharmaceuticals in cartridges, prefix syringes, and vials, from clinical development through commercial launch. 
We can help meet your production needs for both liquid and lyophilized biofilling. Our aseptic bioproduction includes grade-A environments for formulation and filling and 100% non-destructive weight checking to help optimize your product. As a global contract manufacturing leader in pre-filled syringe filling, our Bloomington facility delivers innovative solutions for a broad range of drug molecules. Three high-speed syringe filling lines operate in three separate buildings, creating a built-in risk mitigation strategy to help ensure product availability. Conserve valuable API and improve your yield with our state-of-the-art sensor blood pressure system for cartridge filling. The 100% sensor feedback reduces product waste to help improve yield. In our on-site lyophilization center of excellence, Baxter's team of scientists can offer innovative approaches in formulation, process, and analytical development to maximize the potential of your lyophilized product. Biopharma Solutions is a supplier to global markets, including the United States, Europe, and Japan. Our experience with injectables, combined with a passionate focus on results, can translate into speed to market, reliability, and confidence for our clients. Learn how we can support your injectable outsourcing needs from clinical through commercial. Hey, thank you. So that is a video that hopefully helps you understand on a very high level of what we do in our biopharma solutions plants. And like it did mention, we also have a redundant site um, that is over in Germany. Um, at this time, we're going to move through our team of presenters here. And uh, next up, we're gonna take you through the manufacturing, um, also through quality, and then um, and speak more in depth on our specific roles that we have. Um, our team here today, I, I forgot to mention, um, we have Ryan, Karen, Christy, and myself. Uh, Christy and I are part of the talent acquisition team. I physically sit in Illinois, but I am a dedicated support for Indiana. Um, and then um, I'm going to turn this over to Ryan next. Um, uh, Ryan is our manufacturing manager, is a senior manager for us there, um, as well as Karen, who's a quality manager for us, and Christy, who is another recruiter on my team. Ryan? Ryan? Thank you, Lori. Hi, uh, my name is Ryan Harrison. I'm a building manager here at Baxter Biopharma Solutions. Uh, in my current role, I oversee the day to day operations within the field complex. Uh, to give you a quick background on who I am, uh, I started here back in 2007 uh, working in QA. Uh, the role of that job was to oversee filling activities to make sure we're following all the rules and regulations that are required within this business. Um, from there, um, I became a client rep where I would talk to clients all over the world about a lot of our issues that we would have uh, while filling. Uh, we'd try to resolve those issues and we'd move forward and produce their product for them. Uh, additionally, I've been a process engineer uh, where I look at line inefficiencies, uh, ways to improve product performance. Um, recently, uh, became a building manager, which I am currently. I've uh, been doing that for about a year now. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the fill complex I just kind of give you a broad grasp of what we do here. Uh, so the fill complex consists of three different buildings located on the main campus in Bloomington, Indiana. Within those three buildings, we currently have five different production lines. We have one cartridge line. We have two syringe lines. Uh, we're about to build another syringe line, so that's coming within the next year. And then we have two vial lines that are capable of producing either liquid or lyophilized vials. Um, currently, we are working with 11 of the top 20 pharmaceutical companies in the world. Next slide, please. So contract manufacturing, you may ask yourself, what is that? Um, when I mentioned that we work with all these different pharmaceutical companies around the world, what they do is they provide us with their active pharmaceutical ingredients, or API. We take that, we formulate it, then we fill it into one of the three platforms that I previously mentioned, the cartridge, the syringe, or vial. 
We then package that and then we send it back to them for distribution. Within the field complex, there are four distinct departments. There's preparation, there's formulation, there's filling that may include lyophilization depending upon the product, and then there's capping that may also include sterilization depending upon the products. Next slide. So brief overview of the preparation department. The preparation department, what they do is they take all of our equipment, they clean it, they make sure it's particle free, they then may assemble some of this equipment, and then they autoclave it in order to get rid of all the bio burden that's located or could be housed within this equipment. Um, from there, we push the equipment into the filling suite where then it's sterilized, and we use that to fill products. If we can go to the next slide, please. It's the formulation group. This group takes the API that I previously mentioned. They add different chemicals depending upon the product. They'll go through, they'll do, as mentioned here, precise wiring, mixing, they have temperature control. Uh, they may also join with the QC chemistry department, do analytical testing to make sure the product is within the specifications required. Once acceptable, they will filter that product down into the filling suite. Go into the next slide, please. So filling. So they'll take the sterilized equipment that was assembled in prep. They will take the filtered product from formulation, and then they will fill the product into units, either the cartridges, the syringes, or the vials. They will also stopper each unit to make sure that's integral before it exits the filling suites. What's important to note with the filling operators is aseptic technique. And aseptic technique is a defined set of behaviors designed to mitigate particle generation or contamination of our filled units. Um, many of you may not know, but about every hour we slough off about 40,000 uh, skin cells. So we can't have the skin cells acting as vectors um, transferring microbial contaminants into filled units. So aseptic technique is huge here. Um, we instill upon our operators very early on. You know, we constantly monitor, to monitor them. Um, it's something that we take very seriously here. Next slide, please. All right, capping. So once the units are capped, stoppered, those units then go to the capping department. And what they do is they're looking for gross defects, such as fill volume, stopper placement, live force. They're looking for just anything that we can fix in filling. They're going to notify the filling group so they work hand in hand with them uh, in order to minimize the amount of defects that we see. Once we get all the product out, they then send that on to packaging for inspection. Next slide, please. So, liabilization. This is something that does occur in the filling uh, suite. Uh, depending upon the product that we fill, the client may want to lyophilize it. So this means freeze drying it. And so what we do is we put all this liquid filled vials, we put them into a vacuum chamber where we trick the water into coming out of the vial while leaving the solids left behind. And we do that through pulling a vacuum and then changing temperatures. It's a very cool process. Um, and it, it can be very expensive as well. It's very complicated. Um, but in doing localization, this can improve product stability and it also uh, may extend shelf life for product. So next slide, please. All right, so just real quick, I uh, want to give an overview of the gowning requirements here. So as I mentioned with the 40,000 skin cells that could be sloughed off every hour, um, this is an aseptic manufacturing facility, so we need to be very cautious on how we present ourselves within those classified areas to prevent microbial contamination. So within PrEP, within formulation, and then within capping, we have these gaming requirements that are within the slide right here. Uh, they include coveralls, gloves, uh, shoe covers, hairnet, beard cover for some individuals such as myself, um, and safety glasses. And this is required at all times within PrEP, form, or capping. Next slide, please. All right, so filling, as it's so critical, uh, based upon the, just the nature of what we do, 
um, the filling operators have to wear a, a very uh, complex set of equipment, um, and, and really they can't have any exposed skin whatsoever. Uh, unlike the prep or performer uh, capping areas, um, there can be no skin showing with uh, their gowning. And so you'll see here that they're, I mean, they're covered all the way. Uh, and they have to be that way through the entire process while they're in filling. And then we do train everyone on how to properly gown uh, to make sure we reduce particle generation during the gowning um, process itself as well. So I think that's it for me. I'm going to pass it on to the head of quality assurance, uh, Karen Bourne. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. Um, as Ryan said, my name is Karen Bourne. Um, I currently head up our quality assurance team here in Baxter Bloomington and um, just want to give you a quick background on me and then talk you through some of our activities that we perform at our Daniels Way campus, which is where we do the inspection labeling and packaging activities. So um, I started at Baxter 17 years ago. Um, I was a new graduate from IU and I was looking for um, a job right out of school. I had heard great things about Baxter and um, wanted to get my foot in the door. So I was actually hired as a temporary um, off shift operator. Um, and then I pretty quickly moved to our quality assurance organization as an associate. Um, I spent a couple of years there um, overseeing filling operations. Um, I learned how to aseptically gown as Ryan just walked through. Um, and then from there, I moved into supervision on the off shift, um, also in quality. Um, during that time frame, um, I decided to go back to school and earn my master's degree through Purdue um, and, and Baxter paid for that. Um, and then coming out of that, I became a quality manager. And then I moved kind of sequentially through the different manufacturing buildings um, where we make different products. I spent six years down in the um, packaging complex as a quality manager there. Um, and then just last year, I took on this new role um, as head of QA, um, which includes um, about 55 individuals. Um, and those are all of the quality groups that support our operations, um, both aseptic filling, packaging, and then as well our, our batch release group. So um, kind of moving through the next few slides here, um, we have um, a campus on Daniels Way um, where we do inspection labeling and packaging activities. Um, it's a pretty big campus right across the street from Ivy Tech, um, about 120,000 square feet inside, about half of that is production space and the other half is warehouse and office space. Um, so there's a couple main activities that we perform in this area. Um, on the next slide, there's a couple pictures of our inspection activities. So we have a couple of main types of inspection that we perform. Um, for smaller batch sizes, we'll perform inspection activities manually. So you'll see in that top picture, there are some manual inspectors who are performing um, a review of each unit one by one um, in a lighted inspection booth. And um, you'll also notice that the gowning requirements are less um, in our packaging facility um, because the units are fully closed. Um, when they come to this facility. So the operators that you see performing that inspection um, go through a very rigorous qualification um, and they're qualified separately on all of our different um, component platforms. As Ryan mentioned, we make cartridges, syringes, and then um, vials. And we make vials in two different presentations, um, both liquid and lyophilized. Um, so we also have the capability of performing fully automated inspection, um, which is the machine that you see in that bottom picture there. Um, it's a high speed inspection activity, um, fully automated. Uh, we process about 300 units per minute on those machines. We have currently three syringe automated inspection machines, one vial and one cartridge. Um, and then we also have a, a second or I guess a third type of inspection that we can perform um, for lyophilized products specifically um, called semi-automated, which is just a machine that conveys um, units past a manual inspector and spins them um, in kind of a, a background with lighting um, where they can perform 
an inspection without having to handle each unit individually. Um, so the other main activity that we perform in our Daniels Way campus is labeling and packaging. So the next slide goes through a couple of um, different things that we can do there. So um, we mentioned previously that we work with a lot of different clients. We work with 11 of the 20 top pharma companies in the world, um, and we currently have over 30 active clients overall, um, so a lot of smaller pharma companies as well. Um, and they have all different packaging configurations um, because we distribute products from our facility worldwide. So we have high speed and low speed operations, um, and that's usually based on the, the batch size. So some of our smaller clinical batches will do a lot of manual um, cartoning of those. And then our commercial and larger size batches will go through kind of a fully automated all in one line process where we'll do automated inspection, automated labeling, and in some cases, automated cartoning as well. So that's a quick overview of our packaging facility at Daniel's Way. Um, I'll turn it over now to um, Christy, who is one of our recruiters. Thank you, Karen. So good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to thank you for joining um, the call and learning more about Baxter today. I'm gonna walk through um, an overview of the positions and benefits, but um, I actually started with Baxter in August of 2018 um, as a contract recruiter and then um, became full-time with them in August of um, last year, 2020. Um, I have over 13 years of experience in recruiting and, um, you know, it just takes a team of individuals to work here at Baxter. So we have over 700 employees uh, between the facilities, um, starting from research and development to um, engineering, maintenance, um, production workers, um, quality assurance, as, as Karen uh, mentioned that she's over. Um, and then we have the reg regulatory affairs. Um, technical services team um, is uh, barely, it's a growing industry or growing um, area as well. Uh, next slide. So um, as a full-time employee, you would uh, receive benefits immediately. And some of these benefits include uh, medical dental vision and life insurance coverage. Um, we do offer a very generous paid time off and paid holidays. Um, starting out the first year, you would receive uh, 20 days of vacation time. Uh, we offer retirement save me, savings, which you can choose from a pre-tax or uh, and or the Roth after-tax savings. Um, Baxter does match um, three and a half percent on the first four percent of contributions and provides a non-matching contribution of 3% um, for each year. Um, we also offer 15% um, at 15% employee stock purchase program. Um, through the healthcare um, benefits, we offer the flexible spending account, um, which that has to be used um, for the year. Um, we also offer the adoption reimbursement program, paid parental leave, um, because we are on the um, bus route, we do also offer a pre-tax commuter benefit. Um, educational assistance program, uh, which several employees take advantage of that, and that's $5,200 a year. Um, and then we also offer you know, plenty of discounts um, through our, our wellness program. There's um, resources through the um, Baxwell um, site as well. Next slide. Um, so just a couple of things that we are looking for as far as attributes in a, in a candidate. Um, of course, dependability through good attendance, um, a positive uh, attitude. Um, we are looking for individuals who uh, wanna take um, career goals um, and take hold of their career. And we've got plenty of opportunities within Baxter uh, for career mobility. Um, so it is up to, up, we would like for a candidate to be able to take the lead on that and uh, make your 
um, stance in, in within Baxter. Uh, we're also looking for individuals who want to take initiative. Um, teamwork and collaboration is very big within uh, Baxter. Good communication and um, high performer. Next slide. Uh, so as far as um, the current openings, um, you can visit the website, but we'll just touch on a few of these right now. Um, through our growth and expansion, um, we do have several positions open. Um, and some of those include within the department of the fill complex, we have um, preparation, formulation, filling, and capping operators open. Uh, and those include um, primarily the second and third shift. Uh, we do have some weekend uh, shifts available as well. Um, we're offering um, a shift differential with um, those off shifts. Um, within packaging, we have the finishing group lead, machine operator. Uh, we have a senior calibration tech, which is um, on second shift, I believe. Um, and then the sec uh, senior maintenance tech positions, which are primarily second and third shift as well. Uh, we have the liaison technician, which is on third shift. Um, again, it offers the shift differential. Um, we have a maintenance supervisor position open, um, an LMIS system administrator. And within our lab, we have the microbiology supervisor opening, uh, which does require a degree, um, the quality aud auditor validation associate to uh, technical service validation associate one, which is um, an entry level um, professional position. It just requires a degree. Uh, with that particular position. And most of those um, positions I just mentioned towards the end are uh, on first shift. Next slide. Uh, so this is the website that you can actually go online and view those openings and you can just go to jobs.baxter.com. Uh, and as Ryan mentioned, uh, our main campus is at South Curry Pike, and we have a location on Daniels Way, which is the patch packaging complex. Uh, and then we have two warehouse, which you'll see on this picture is T3 and T2. Um, next slide. I think that's it. Questions? Yeah, thanks, uh, Christy, and everybody else. If we can have uh, the rest of you come back on, uh, let's get going. We got several questions that came in. We'll take a few minutes and get those going. And uh, Christy, since you were just on, I'm going to throw one of them your way right here. You had mentioned about the available shifts. Can you provide a little more information about those shifts? And then do you offer a weekend shift? And what are those hours? So if you can touch on that for a second. Sure. So within the field complex, um, First shift hours are 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Second shift is uh, 3 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Third shift is 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. And they work Sunday through third uh, Friday. Um, so those, those the Monday, um, the three, the second shift and first shift works Monday through Friday. Um, all shifts have to be um, available to work weekends because there are some weekends included. Um, the field complex does offer a weekend shift, which um, there's a couple of different schedules for that, but primarily they work um, Thursday and Friday um, and then Saturday and Sunday um, or a um, Sunday, Saturday through Sunday and then Monday through Tuesday schedule. Okay. And it would be 36 hours a week for those for those. OK, thanks That'd for that, Christy. Uh, Karen, I want to put you on the spot. Uh, we always we hear this often from job seekers. Um, what do you love most about working for Baxter? Tell us. Sure. So there's a couple of things I would mention. I think the first thing is really the work that we do here um, is very important, and it's um, you know something that is used. For they say every second of every day, a patient somewhere is using a product that we made at our facility, um, which is just really neat. And um, it, it's neat to be part of work that's that important. Um, and then second, I would say the people that work here are really great. Um, we have a really great management team. 
um, a lot of the folks that work in management here have been here for some time and they've kind of come up through the ranks like Ryan and I um, and have you know been exposed to a lot of the jobs on the floor and um, we really listen and respond to um, you know anything that you know people are really looking for in their job and, and we help work with um, development and opportunities. Okay, Ryan Harrison, um, culture. A question came in about company culture. How would you describe it? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, it's also a pretty difficult question. I could tell you um, this company, they do a great job, though. They're very cognizant of the well-being of their employees. Um, it's a big company, but it feels pretty small. We all know each other. Um, pandemic aside, um, our families hang out with the other employees' families. Um, we know each other very well. Um, the, the leadership team around here has also done a great job getting in front of employees' well-beings. Uh, we have a culture team here. Uh, their, their focus is to make sure that we're happy. Um, recently, the employees, they wanted better food. Uh, so we brought in a, a great food service provider for both sites. Um, people are very happy about that. Um, new fitness centers, um, Building G, uh, over here in the cell complex, we have one as well. Um, they're constantly looking out and, and getting feedback from employees and look, looking for ways to, to improve the well-being uh, here. It, 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 it's a special place. Um, it's like a family. Okay. Thanks for that, Ryan. Uh, Rob King, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, tell us about, we got a lot of out-of-state registrations, and anybody else, when Rob's done, that's in Bloomington, feel free to jump in. But Rob, tell us a little bit about Bloomington, because people may not know that. I know I always think of the Hoosier National Forest, uh, one of the great assets. In, certainly, Bloomington's one of the great assets to the state of Indiana and the Midwest, Indiana University, and so much more. But Rob, what do you like about Bloomington and anybody else that wants to jump in? Well, you know, I'm a little biased here. It's uh, what's not to like about uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Of course, you mentioned Indiana University uh, main campus is located in Bloomington. We also have Ivy Tech uh, is located here. And, you know, the culture here is just wonderful. Uh, the people are amazing in Bloomington, Indiana, actually all of South Central Indiana. It is a unique place to, to, to be. Um, I My family's here. We're raising our children here. Uh, the schools are great and it's a great place to uh, raise a family to be honest and uh, there's tons to do uh, lots to see around Indiana so Bloomington's the place to be so we love it I'm um, not just saying that because I you think I have to say it I do not I <laughs> truly love it that's why we're here um, we're in South Central Indiana by choice so love Bloomington anybody else want to chime in okay let's go on to um, Karen uh, how does Baxter differentiate themselves from their competitors? Talk a little bit about that if you can. Yeah, so I have a couple of thoughts about that. One thing that we've worked on a lot is just trying to make sure that we have a good work-life balance for our employees. So um, we have some local competition that um, is working a lot on holidays and weekends and asking a lot of their staff to be here for those days. Um, but for instance, in our filling complex on Curry Pike, we have a whole staff that's dedicated to those days um, so that most of our other employees can have those days off with their families. And then we incentivize and, of course, have, um, you know, shift specialties for um, the weekend there. Um, and I will say that, too, um, our, our benefits are very good at Baxter. We're very competitive here. Um, a few of the things that were mentioned um, on Christy's slide um, are pretty important. Our 401k matching is um, one of the best in the area. We have very good health care coverage. Um, there's a lot of really great benefits. Um, and then I think I mentioned earlier, too, um, the tuition reimbursement program is also um, pretty great. Okay. Um, next one, I want to throw your way, Christy. I previously applied for a position at Baxter. This is someone that's on that uh, previously applied but wasn't hired. At that time, do I need to reapply online to be considered, or is my resume still on file? Uh, they would need to reapply to a specific okay. position. So yes. Okay. So uh, start all over, reapply. Um, okay. I'm writing down a couple more questions here. Ryan, here's one for you. Uh, why are there so many openings? Is Baxter expanding? 
Uh, yeah, we are expanding. Uh, recently, back in November, we announced a $50 million expansion here at the site. Um, part of that, we have a 25,000 square foot warehouse we're putting in. Um, additionally, we have a new fill line we're putting in. It's a new syringe line capable of producing uh, upwards of 600 syringes per minute. Um, awesome fast. Uh, so yeah, we are we are expanding for sure. Exciting times. Thanks for that. Uh, Lori, I'm going to send this one your way. What are the education and experience requirements for the current openings? Talk a little bit about that, and then I, I, I want to jump in, pair in another question related to that, uh, experience and training. Do you have some training programs for people that just come, want to come in, want to work hard, and, and learn some things? Talk a little bit about training uh, and uh, education and experience requirements. Yes, um, absolutely. So to talk about the education requirements, the education requirements are going to be different based on the level of the role and what the role does. Um, so most of our um, production, it, it's all going to be high school diploma. Um, so, and across Baxter, honestly, it's a high school diploma or, or um, a GED. Um, then when you start getting into more specialized, more technical roles, um, some of our roles in quality are going to require um, science degrees. Um, because you're going to be dealing either with microbiology in the laboratory or chemistry. Um, and then in our manufacturing, um, those roles maybe just require a, a, a general, you know, degree with some experience in manufacturing. Um, and then also in our engineering team and our maintenance team, we do look for, you know, that engineering um, degree for engineers or an associate's degree, preferably for those maintenance roles, unless you've, you're a, you know, someone who's got a lot of maintenance um, experience. And more of our commercial or client-facing roles, again, just a general degree, some of those do only require a high school diploma. So it's going to be specific to the position. And you, as you fill out your talent profile, you're going to be able to set up uh, job alerts so that the system will send you when positions come available that are of interest to you if you don't see anything on the career site at this moment. Um, now talking about the training side, we are uh, what's called, we are a drug manufacturer. So we're heavily regulated by government agencies. The FDA, State Boards of Pharmacy, um, OSHA, all those agencies have oversight over what we do because what we do can save lives and take lives if it's not done properly. So we okay. wanna make sure we have a safe environment. So training is paramount at Baxter. As an entry level um, operator, you will be taken through two weeks of new hire onboarding where you're tra trained about all the concepts and all the, the techniques that Ryan discussed and what we do in those areas. Um, so aseptic technique, how to gown properly. Um, we have you know, lots of controls in place. We have standard operating procedures because again, what we do is so important in people's lives. Um, so it's a very safe environment one of the safest, strictest environments you're ever going to work in. I liken it to a military organization. So if you like military, that's right up your alley. Um, there's lots of career pathing internally. So if you want to become a Six Sigma green belt or black belt or whatever, there's lots of opportunities. We have tuition reimbursement. Um, and obviously, in any of our positions that are not directly touching the product, you're going to also go through GMP training as well, just to make sure that you understand the Baxter environment. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, Christy, I'm going to send this one your way. There was a question, I know you touched on a little bit, about insurance. Can you touch on that just a, just a second, and specifically, how long is the wait for insurance and other things such as FMLA? Sure. Um, insurance is effective on day one, um, and the cost to the employee is going to vary on dependents and which plan that they want to enroll in, but it would be effective immediately. Um, as far as the FMLA, there is a certain period of time that um, you have to work before you're eligible for that, um, but insurance is effective immediately. Okay. I want to throw this one out to the group. Um... Uh, I'm interested in multiple positions. So I know you listed the position. So how does that work when you come in and say there may be several on there, or I maybe want to come in and, and uh, you guys slot me and where you think the best fit? How does how, how should they approach that? 
Um, I can take that one. <laughs> um, you may have a background and qualifications and experience that match up with many of our opportunities. So just know that every time you push submit my application, there's a recruiter on the other end of that looking at your individual um, application. We review every single resume that comes through. Um, and as tedious as that might sound, it's that important to us and, and we know it's important to you. Um, so every hiring manager also has the ability to review every single applicant that comes through. So there's like a, a tag team there. Um, and then we will reach out to you for the role that we think, yeah, this is, looks like it might be a good match for them. Now, if you haven't heard anything and, and it's been a while, you know, so in some cases you can reach out to us and just say, hey, I've submitted multiple applications and never heard anything from Baxter. Let us know. It is our commitment that we will turn around on your application within like days of, of seeing it. So, so you'll know pretty quickly. Um, and we, we, we have a commitment to strive for there and we may not always hit it, but we, we do our best to make sure that we get prompt communication back to you. So yeah, go ahead and apply to as many applications or many requisitions that you see might be a good fit for your experience in education. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, there are some others that have come in here. Uh, again, I'll throw this out to the floor. Uh, what is one of the biggest and exciting challenges of the job? So the biggest and exciting challenges of the job. Anybody want to speak to that? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, so asystic manufacturing is extremely uh, complex. Um, Every day is a new challenge. Uh, we have all these clients from around the world. They all have their own specifications and products that we have to abide by. Um, not only that, wherever we're uh, sending that product, different countries, those countries' regulatory agencies have to come on site and audit us as well. Um, so it's a challenge every day, something new every single day. Uh, look forward to people that welcome challenges. Okay, good. Thanks for that, Ryan. Uh, on, on a similar vein, uh, I see the word stressful here. So what do you see as the most stressful part of the job? What advice would you give on handling stress? Anybody want to touch that? I could go again if you want. Sure. Same, uh, same thing, though. <laughs> um, you know, every day, uh, something new, challenges every day. Um, however, to deal with those stresses, we have a great team. Uh, you know, I work with Karen a lot. I work with other departments all the time. Uh, we're a team, and we get through it together. Okay. Um, I was also go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to add on to that that we do have a team at Baxter Corporate that is constantly looking at uh, wellness, um, and they they offer lots of ways for you to uh, you know take a course or. Um, talk to someone, uh, you know, about those more stressful things in life, um, and then managing your own day. Uh, we do have a pretty strong work-life balance here, but we do look for individuals that can operate the, at the speed of change. Uh, change is happening every day around, uh, you know, here. So um, that's what we would look for. But, you know, we reach out to each other just like Ryan said. Okay, thanks. Um, international candidates. Does Baxter hire international candidates? Come on. I want to hog the time here, but I can go ahead and jump in, Christy, unless you want to. Um, yes, as as a, just a short answer, um, yes, we do consider international candidates and transfer of sponsorships. The caveat to that is, is it is position specific. Um, it is usually going to be for more of those technical roles that are very challenging to fill um, with U.S. Uh, you know, authorized uh, candidates, um, but we have and we do consider it, and it's always on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, um, here's a couple specific things. Uh, I have over six years of research, research experience in microbiology and molecular biology. I am keen to work in quality assurance. Is there any opportunity for training or applying for volunteer work? 
Um, I'll take that one since I'm in quality. I don't oversee the quality control groups, which is probably what you'd be interested in. Um, we also have an active R&D department here in Baxter Bloomington um, that does hire interns. Our QC group um, also does have some intern type roles um, at some frequencies. So that is something that may be of interest um, and those um, would also be posted um, on our job site. Um, and then also maybe through outreach through um, individual universities as well. Okay, and just a reminder, everybody is, uh, the, all the recruiters that you see, they'll be getting these questions and your contact information. So uh, they will have the ability to follow up with you. Um, there's just, a, here's one, I have a GED, first aid, CPR, home health aid, and CNA, CNA license. You think there's a job for me? Yes, most definitely. Um, we, I mean, we have to do a lot of documentation through our processes and uh, st and following standard operating procedures. So, with your healthcare industry, um, that's a, a real good. We find that's a good fit at, in the manufacturing facility. Good, good. Sounds like there's plenty of opportunity, including the the training programs that are in place. And I guess the bottom line here is, hey get your application in and let you guys, the recruiters, go through and you can find out uh, where's the best fit, uh, get to know the people, uh, but don't delay. I know these jobs are important for you all to get filled with the right people. And so it sounds like you're pretty open to set of credentials. So I'm going, we need to get things kind of wrapped up. I'm gonna go up uh, around the horn one more time uh, and for any kind of final comments. Karen, anything from you? Nothing else for me, but thank you so much for everyone for your time. Okay, thank you, Karen. Ryan Harrison. Uh, yeah, nothing else for me. And again, uh, thank you for your time. Lori, any uh, any final comments from you? Of course. No, <laughs> no um, I would just encourage everyone that's on this to do as, uh, you know, as was mentioned, um, go ahead and set up a talent profile with us. There may not be a job opportunity that meets your specific needs right now, but it may come in the future, in the very quick future. And, and so go ahead up and set up a talent profile. Our system does allow you to set up job alerts. That way you can sit back and those job alerts will come to you. Okay, thanks for mentioning that, Lori. Uh, you know, maybe not now, but get your, uh, get your uh, application in uh, today. Uh, Christy, any final thoughts from you? Yeah, I just want to ditto what Lori said and um, appreciate everyone's time being on the call. And thank you. Great. And I want to thank uh, all of you guys, all of today's uh, panelists for their time today, and certainly all of you uh, online that took your time out to look into these, uh, I think, just wonderful opportunities. They're Baxter, an international company with a tremendous uh, reputation in a great location. So just a final reminder that today's program is being recorded and, and about this time tomorrow you'll get a link to the recording. And with that I'm going to turn it over to Rob King who made all this possible to thank Rob and to have him uh, have the final say. Thanks Rob. Hey thank you Bob and we appreciate you moderating here today and I just want to personally thank uh, Christy, Ryan, uh, Karen, and Lori for your time to present the information for Baxter. And uh, Last but definitely not least, we want, I want to thank all of the job seekers or potential job seekers that joined us today to learn about these opportunities available at Baxter International. Um, thank you for joining us today and, and spending this past hour with us. I hope that your uh, questions were answered and you found out enough information to maybe encourage you to apply to Baxter. I think it's a wonderful company to work for. Uh, we partner with uh, several employers in this area and they're, and they're one of them and we definitely uh, enjoy doing this here today. Um, and final thoughts and in closing, I just encourage each of you to check out your local WorkOne office for assistance with any aspect of your career job search. I promise it's definitely worth your time and, and, and that it doesn't cost you anything. These services that we offer are free. We have career counselors that are standing by to do everything from just assist you with a basic resume to more in-depth resumes, to job search, to employment and training programs, the whole nine works. You might be surprised. Uh, for some, it's a well-kept secret, but we are getting it out there. So definitely visit one of your local work ones. Again, we're, we have work one located in each of the counties we serve. Um, we definitely have uh, one of our uh, government center out of Bloomington here, uh, houses um, several other agencies uh, on site. Uh, we have the Family and Social Services Administration, the local BMV, and, and a few others uh, that are on site. So again, thanks again for attending today. We appreciate it. Uh, as always, take care, stay healthy, and remain safe. Have a good day.
Thank you.